Welcome to 30 Minutes to Wealth, the show that teaches you how to build wealth through real estate. Our company, ProFunds Mortgages, has assisted real estate investors in achieving wealth for over two decades. Over the next 30 minutes, we're going to share some of our key strategies in real estate with you. Right here on 30 Minutes to Wealth. Hi, I'm Carmen. This is Jordan. Welcome to 30 Minutes to Wealth. The show that teaches you how to build wealth through real estate. Today we are excited to bring on an interior designer that's going to show us how you can get the most bang for your buck through a design perspective on your home or investment property. We're so thrilled to have Jacqueline Harper from Harper Designs here to discuss the small details and things that we can do to create value in our real estate. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Jordan, and this is Carmen. Welcome back to 30 Minutes to Wealth. We're here with our guest, Jacqueline. Jacqueline, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having yeah. me, ladies. This Amazing. is awesome. Yeah. Very exciting. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a really exciting episode, and we're going to talk about interior design hacks adding value to your property. Right, because yeah. there's so many things to think about that can really get you some money back out of your home. I know. Yes. I know, and a lot of people can't even fathom the little things that you do and how much it would create for you. So, so let's I'm, help them out. I'm yeah. thrilled. I'm thrilled so, about so this. So Jacqueline, tell us a little bit about yourselves. You're, you're the founder of um, Harper Designs, yes. and you also have an extensive background in television, which is yes. really cool. Like, tell us a bit about your background and what sparked your interest to get started in interior design. Well, I've worked in television for about nine years now, believe it or not, wow. and um, I actually was a DIY guru for our local morning show for about three years. So that's what kind of sparked my interest in design. And What so, kind of things did you do on the... Oh, we refinish cabinets, we refinish ah, pieces of furniture. So, so cool. that's where I really realized that that was maybe the direction that I should be going in. Right. Um, I offered to work for a design firm, so I was an intern for a little bit, then I was freelancing for a few years, and just this past March, I launched my own firm. Good for you. So I've learned a lot, and I definitely want to help your viewers understand how important it is to you know invest in the right things. Yes. Because yes. I know today we're going to talk about the exterior of the home as well as the interior. Let's yes. start with the exterior. Um, what do you think are some of the most important factors to consider for people that want to get the most value out of their home when taking into account the, the exterior of their properties? Well, the number one thing to do, and a lot of people kind of overlook this, is to just stand across the street and take a photo of your home. Mm -hmm. yeah. I actually even love using you know, Google Maps and going back over the years That's to such see a the progression. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, because is. sometimes there's a bush blocking a window or you've noticed that maybe three years ago the landscaping on your property looked amazing. Why doesn't it look that good now? So you mm -hmm. really want to evaluate how your home looks because that's how other people see it. I've noticed that too. You could do little things on a property because we do a lot of uh, purchasing real estate as you probably know, yes, and um, and it's the exterior, the curb appeal, which is the first thing that comes in the door. So Do you know, you can get seven percent more on your ROI just by investing in your landscaping. Yep, it's simple things like if there's something that's hiding your property, you want it to frame your property. I agree. Oh, yes. Yes. yes, so yeah. just it's by doing some little tweaks, that people yeah. need to you can get that ROI. Mm -hmm. And then you know the cleanliness of the the area. So when you walk up, that as you were saying, yes. things are trimmed back, like the gardening and everything looks clean and precise. And also the front door is yes. a big thing. Yes. So what about updating the look of the home? Yeah. Like what if it's in a bit of a rougher situation and it needs that kind of, you know, just refinishing to make it look a little bit more appealing to viewers coming on? What do you recommend in, in that uh, standpoint? Well, when it comes to that, I mean, there are so many different things to consider, right? If your paint is peeling on your home, if you're looking to sell that home, that's the first thing people are going to notice. They're going to say, great. What else is wrong with this house, right? Yeah. You don't want them to focus on those negatives. Because so, that's their first impression, right? Absolutely. Well, even if it wasn't peeling and it's a really dated color, yep. you know, painting it something fresh and yes. vibrant and something with the times today yeah. makes such a difference. Like we did that with a home that we did recently. And it was, uh, I don't know what color the brick was on, on that house. On was it like Street. a neutral color? It was, oh, uh, yes. it was like this old brownie taupey. taupe, but it just had this very old look to it. Yeah. Right. And we went in, we painted it all white and fresh right. and Beautiful. new trim. And it just Front made doors. it pop. Oh, yeah. And everyone Beautiful. now is noticing the house on that street when before it was kind of just clouded over. Kind of yes. Oh. And if you go with, you know, a really crisp 
white palette for your trim, mm -hmm. why not go a little bit darker with your brick? They've got so many formulations of paint these days. They actually have a stain. Have you heard of the stain that they're using on brick now? No. No, I haven't okay. heard of it. Well, I'm excited to tell you and your viewers about this because a lot of people think their only option is to paint. Now, if you already have paint existing on your brick, you are not, you cannot use the oh, stain. Okay. It has to be fresh brick. Right. But the thing about using paint on your brick, sometimes it's not a good option because your brick is porous. Right. And what yep. happens is that paint sits directly on top of the stone and all the moisture gets trapped underneath. And that's why it peels, it yeah. chips, it breaks off, and it wears down over time. With the stain, this is this new formulation that they've come out with, it actually absorbs into the stone, into the brick itself, so That's you so have cool. a warranty. And is that wow. um, a cost-effective approach? Absolutely, so when it comes to resurfacing your home, of course, siding like this, it looks spectacular, but if you're looking for an option to get you the most bang for your buck, something inexpensive, yes. mm -hmm. that's when you wanna consider painting or staining your brick. And that will increase the property value tremendously. Absolutely, yeah. but there are things to consider as well, like how much is your house currently going for? You wanna get a professional in, you want mm -hmm. the realtor to come in, see how much your house is selling for in that market, because if it's already at that top market value, investing, you know, $5,000 yeah. in resurfacing your home, mistake a lot it's of not people worth make. it. Yeah. You yeah. know, they spend too much money in the renos and right. it's sitting on the market and it's not yeah. moving. So I think it's and really important loss. that people need to do yeah. their research before they come in and yeah. tackle these types of reno projects to know that what they're putting in is ultimately going to create the value that they're looking for at the end of the day, right? Absolutely. Something else to consider is your concrete. So mm. do you have a walkway? Is there a beautiful entryway to your home? I mean, concrete can be an investment Mm -hmm. but it can also really help to sell that landscaping, sell the look of your home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And little details to think about are adding pops of color. Right. So you can do this by, you know, putting different chairs on your front porch, adding some yeah. color in the pillows. Yes. But when it comes to resurfacing your home, a color like this may not be your best option. Right. Unless it's for you to enjoy. If you love a color like this beautiful green, it's gonna pop on your street might not be so good for resale. Right. So it's better to stick to neutral colors for sure. Yeah, especially when you're selling to a third party and as you mentioned, you're not creating it for yourself because everybody has yeah. different tastes and preferences, right? Although this color, I find it absolutely gorgeous. Yes, it may it not be everybody's taste, right? So if we stick yeah. to more of the neutral palette, for sure. we can appeal to a larger demographic. Yeah, I, I noticed that we just finished another project and the interior was Beautiful, like I loved it, and it was very farmhouse and brick and gorgeous, very gorgeous. like yes. absolutely magnificent. But I was so shocked, and I'm learning. I'm going, holy crap! I thought everyone would love this. So I think when you're doing investment property builds or renos or anything, it has to be neutral yes. and very simple. People can make their changes later if they want to do anything fundamentally yeah. large. Or if you're going to add those pops of color, make sure it's not something permanent. So you could freshen up your front door with that color. Right, and that they would could be change gorgeous. That out. Yeah, right. And but you bring up a really good point. Is mm -hmm. The fact that you want to look at the market again, look at the neighborhood, mm -hmm. who is going to be buying that home? Who's yeah. going to be renting that home, right? Yes. Maybe something that trendy is not going to be so appealing to the elderly that are looking to retire in your community. That's so right. true. Right? Yes, so absolutely. So try not to make decisions for yourself, but for the investment and for the people that will be living in that home. Right. Now, yeah. Jackie, what about backyards? Because I know this plays into the whole exterior of the property, yes. and I know that I, I think it's becoming more and more popular that people want to have a nice outdoor space that they can kind of retreat to and mm -hmm. enjoy, especially during the summer months. So Absolutely. do you have any insight on that and, and you know what people can do to kind of maximize their, their value of their property through their backyard? Well, yeah. great question because a lot of us know that kitchens and baths sell homes. Yes. yes. You basically get about 80% ROI when you invest in a kitchen or a bathroom. Well, your backyard, it's actually known to bring back 70% ROI, and people don't know that. People don't think about 70 that. 70%? Yes. Wow. So if you were invest in a deck, you're creating extendable living space. Yeah. Yes. So people look at that square footage in the home, and maybe it's only a 1,200 square foot home. Now you add you know, a 600 square foot deck out back, that's living space. Mm -hmm. And we're finding a lot more people are living outdoors. Well, not necessarily. Well, yeah, some yes, of them are living are. outdoors. <laughs> <laughs> we want we want to be outdoors. We do. We and do, yeah. um, barbecues, family time, 
making it magical in the backyard. Mm -hmm. And that's another example I can it say because we've just gone through so much of this. Yeah. I feel like it creates, when people step in and they see something like that, it creates this almost like this lifestyle. And that's something, another thing that we're going to talk about. Yes. But people step in and they envision themselves there. Oh, and yeah. it's something that I feel like creates that emotional type of connection For to sure. the property. And that's right? what pays the emotional aspect yes. of it. So when they feel like they're getting more out of their money, mm -hmm. that's worth it. So what little tweaks can we do to backyards that are you know cost effective but can go a long way? Again, landscaping. Yeah. So mm -hmm. by investing in a deck, as I mentioned, you're going to get that bang. You're going to get that return on your investment. That's right. Um, you could do some concrete paving, which is great. You and know what I think is great too? Flower planter boxes that have a pop of color. Yeah. Like just putting those on the they back windows. It can make windows, a big difference. It makes it so warm. Yeah. Yep. and inviting and, and I think that worked really well in that yeah. house that we were talking it about. It really did. Also, Makes it feel like the lifestyle you're creating yes. for these people, right? Yeah. They can see themselves yeah. sitting on the back patio enjoying a cup of coffee. Yeah. When it's bare, when there's nothing there, maybe they don't want to be sitting back there, right? Yeah. So it's trying to embrace that lifestyle for the people that you're trying to sell to. Awesome. Well, we have to go to break. I can't wait to get back to more of this. Don't go away. We'll be right back. If you'd like more information about investing in real estate or have any questions or comments, check us out online at profunds.ca. While you're there, be sure to view our other episodes filled with great real estate knowledge. Hi, I'm Jordan and this is Carmen. Welcome back to 30 Minutes to Wealth. <laughs> we're here with our guest Jacqueline Harper from Harper Designs and we're talking about interior design tips and tricks to adding value to your home. Yes. So we just spent the first half talking about the exterior. Now let's dig into the interior Inside. of the home. Yes. Um, I know you mentioned that kitchen is one of the biggest ones. Talk to us a little bit about where people should look to improve their kitchens to maximize their return on their on their properties. Yeah. Okay, well, I mean, there's so many there's things so much to consider. We can talk about here. I yeah. know, and it really depends on your budget. Now, yeah. my tip for hardware is I always like to use three different types of hardware in the same finish. This makes your kitchen look custom. So, what do you mean by yeah. that? So, let's say I'm choosing um, a polished nickel finish. Okay. You want to use three different types. So let's say I'm using a library pole for some of the upper drawers. Okay. Then I'm using a handle for some of my pull-out cabinets. And then I would use a knob for other oh, I ones. I see. So, so, you so just you're change. intermixing oh, yes, in understand. the same finish, okay, got but it. it makes it look that much more custom. Yeah, so you that's a great three. idea. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So that's just one of the things to consider. Something else to consider is, does the kitchen look dated? How right. are the cabinets? What's the condition of the kitchen? Mm -hmm. If it looks dated, you're not going to be able to fix that with some paint. Yeah. You're probably going to need to invest, you know. In a and, bit of a reno. Exactly. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. if they're in good shape, maybe just by refinishing those cabinets is going to get you that ROI. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it is different too, though, if you're doing this for a home that you're potentially going to flip to another owner occupant or if you're doing this as a rental property. Very true. So the finishes really are going to be different. So if you're if you're looking yeah. at doing a new kitchen for an owner occupant, it has to be better quality. Absolutely. That's you want right. to look at the market too. Mm -hmm. I know I keep going back to this, but this should really be the first step before you make any adjustments to your home. Mm -hmm. How much is your house worth? Is it at yeah. that max price in your market right now? Because mm -hmm. then putting $50,000 into your home it's not going to give you that money back. Yeah. That's right. It is known that you get about 80% ROI when you invest in your kitchen. So if you're investing 50000 which yeah. is a lot of money. That's huge. Yeah, that's yes. Huge. So huge. that is really where you want to invest if you're hoping to touch anything in your home. Right. Um, if you don't have that kind of money and you're looking for just a simple, quick fix, a lot of the time dated appliances, again, can date your kitchen by yes. just updating one of those appliances. So by putting in a shiny new stove or a shiny new fridge, it gives the people new the dishwasher. feel. dishwasher. Yeah, even yeah. just one. Just yeah. one of those elements can really Go make a homeowner. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Very can, cool. Yeah. I never thought about that, really. Absolutely. But that's amazing. That's great. And what other, like, you know, unique things can we do? Like, what about lighting in the kitchen? Yes. Or are there other okay. certain tweaks that we Getting can make into the to make stuff things now. look <laughs> really nice and enticing when people walk mm. into this property? Oh, yeah. See, I get yeah. so excited about this. I so, do, too. I love it. When it comes to your island, I find a lot of people, a lot of the time, will go with 
smaller pendant lights when yes. really you want to go bigger. You want to mm -hmm. make a statement. Right. So I would go for two larger pendants as opposed to three smaller ones to avoid clutter. Investing in your countertops. Right. Of course, quartz is my number one these days. We're seeing a yes. lot of people drifting away from granite. Why is that? Quartz because, well, I guess it depends on where you're buying your quartz. There's so much to know when it comes to quartz these days. Certain brands like Caesar Stone, Cambria, Handstone, right. they are well-known manufacturers of quartz. And um, we're finding brands that maybe aren't so well-known, these days they're mixing in a lot of glue, wood chips, mm -hmm. mirror fillers. So there really isn't a standard when it comes to quartz yet. And they're they're working on that I didn't right know now. That. Yeah. yeah, they're trying to legalize that because quartz is getting a bad rep. Some people are buying their quartz countertops and then they're getting a stain. Well, that's probably because you didn't spend a ton of money and you got a cheaper version right, so that has all this wood bet. filler and mirror. Right? Mm -hmm. When you're investing in the good stuff, you're not right. going to get the stains. Now, why are people steering away from granite? What is it with granite? I think it's a little more old, old school. I think it's a little yeah. dated, right? There's all these different flecks and all the different, I mean, again, it depends on the market you're going for. Right. Yeah. So yeah. brings me back to that. Yeah. Do your research, get a professional yeah. opinion. Right. It depends on who you're looking to rent to, who you're looking to sell to. If it's right. an elderly market, maybe granite's the option, right? Because it's a little yeah. more dated. Cool, now what about um, paint in the kitchen? Yes. Like, do, if people want to add accent colors, is that recommended? Um, you know, what's too much and what's just just right for that resale? So when it comes to paint, you want to think long and hard. I always recommend neutral. So yes. whether that's a grayish or a taupe or a gray or white. White is classic. And yeah. then if you really want to incorporate some color, do that in the island. A lot of the time, that's people are idea. actually afraid to incorporate color in their yeah. island because it's so permanent. It is. Yeah. But when you really think about it, your countertop really kind of dilutes the color in your kitchen because that's the main thing that you're seeing. Right. If you are looking to use some color, I recommend going with um, some blues or some greens. They tend right. to be a little bit more neutral. A lighter shade, yeah. not bright, you know what? obviously. It doesn't dark. have to be a lighter shade. Okay. It can be a brighter shade, a darker shade, which can actually look very rich in a kitchen. Yeah, I could see I could, that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, you're giving me all this ideas. <laughs> inspiration here. Ooh, but you don't right. want you don't want to go with like a bright pink or a red because that will leave a statement and not a good oh, one. No, no, no. People will remember that red island as opposed to all the good qualities of the kitchen. I don't think the husband would agree. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about the bathroom next because I know that's one of the second most important parts of the yeah, home. Absolutely. What do you recommend if we just want to do some quick cosmetic? fixes but nothing too invasive. So you can get so much back for just investing in a new, in a new faucet, in some new hardware for your vanity, mm -hmm. and hiring a cleaner. You do not want mold, grime, mildew. That is a deterrent for sure. When people see the uncleanliness yeah. Oh, yeah. of let's say your shower, because it's hard to get that grime and mildew. I feel like it's a very subtle thing that you wouldn't necessarily pick up on, but it gives that overall kind of yeah, like you know, a negative vibe. Yeah, negative vibe, exactly. It just makes just it look old. redoing the shower? Yeah, you could do entirely. that. Entirely. I mean, it? there's so many different ways to do that. There's bathtub resurfacing companies these days. Yeah, there's yeah. tile painting companies. Just by freshening up the grout yes. can go a long way as That's well. That's true. That's yeah. very true if you're trying to watch mm -hmm. every penny that you're spending there. Anything we can do in the bathroom to kind of add like a wow factor? You know what? I would just keep it Heated simple. Heated floors? Yeah. Heated floors can go a long way, yes. <laughs> That's one of those things that when people walk in, yeah. they go, wow, I wish I had this in my home. Yeah. Again, bringing it back to selling the lifestyle. Yes. I can picture myself living here. Oh, imagine, you know, when you get out of the shower, those nice heated floors, you want people to envision themselves That's, in that space. I feel like if I was going through and they had a heated floor in the bathroom, You'd I would it. view that as a <laughs> big plus. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not that expensive. I think it's yeah. about 6 to $7 a square foot when it comes to heated floors. And I guess the last main thing in the house that you know usually recommend yeah. is the basement. So what can yeah. people do in the basement to, to kind of increase our return on investment? 
you want to look at things like your living space. If there's a lot of living space already, what are you going to get out of the basement? Could you add another bedroom? Now that Could, would create value. Yes, that absolutely. Could, yeah. Could you add another bathroom? Is that going to add value? Those are the types of things you want to consider when you're exploring that you know new living space downstairs. Right. I guess it also would depend on, again, the use, right? Is this a rental property? Yep. Uh, we had another guest on and we were speaking about the basements and his philosophy was that that basement can add tremendous value, huge right? value because well, he's adding go. another unit which creates value so it all depends yes. on so that. if you're renting if for you're sure renting, or you're looking to get property. a renter yeah absolutely now, yeah. Jackie we have some awesome samples here yes. talk to us a little bit about this so this is luxury vinyl so we're seeing this a lot nowadays in basements because mm -hmm. it's so inexpensive and it looks like hardwood so it's about three to four dollars a square foot. Right. Extremely inexpensive when you're shopping, you know, for hardwood. Yeah. Um, and it, it gives you that look. Yeah. So That's it's a, a nice great look. return on your investment if you're going to invest in your basement. Right. And do you recommend that only for a basement or would you use it on the main floor as well? It depends. It depends. You know, it, it's a very practical element. So if you have dogs, if you have kids, this is a great option for your entire home. And it looks right. great. Yeah. 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 I use that all the time on our rental properties. It's great. So That's it's the great way stuff. to go because it's inexpensive, right? That's right. Okay, Jackie. So thank you so much for sharing all of your information with us today. Do you have any last, um, you know, big tips to, to give the viewers? You know what? Something I really want to share because I yeah. think it's really eye-opening is a design consultation or a staging consultation could cost a few hundred dollars to you know a few thousand dollars right. but it's a three percent increase on your ROI. So are you so, saying staging? Oh. Yes so let's for instance say your house is four hundred thousand dollars right three percent on that is an extra twelve thousand wow. dollars so that and that's few just hundred adding, like a few you know throw pillows yes. or you know those types of things brilliant that few well, hundred to a few that. thousand for staging wow. or interior design will Definitely go a lot further it. i totally absolutely agree with you there. and totally. jackie we know that you're giving away a gift to all the viewers yeah. today talk to us Thank about you. that well so all of your viewers that are watching they can get a free wealth design guide so i'm going to have a full guide and a checklist that they can download on your website Awesome. So if you are Thank interested you. in learning more about that, feel free to go to 30minutes12.com. I guess our 30 minutes are up. Go create wealth.